that's the beautiful part about God. Things can be restored like that. Things can be undone like that. You can get to a position that again, by the world standards would take you five years and three degrees to be in and God can do it like that. God can open doors that no man can shut. Hello everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name is Melody and I make faith-based content here on YouTube. I post new videos every single Monday. So if that is something you're interested in, definitely be sure and subscribe. I would love to have you join the family. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about three signs that God is shifting you supernaturally. Whether you've been walking with the Lord for five minutes or walking with the Lord for five years or 50 years, at some point or another, you're going to go through a moment or even moments of God shifting you, of God shifting you to put you into position to do the thing or be more of the person that he's created you to be. Now, when it comes to these shifting seasons, yes, shifting is exciting, but oftentimes shift can imply change and change is not always the most comfortable. So we can have this tendency to try to fight against what God is doing in these shifting seasons simply because it is not comfortable. But that's the opposite of what we wanna do. We really wanna lean into these moments and I think the best way that we can lean into what God is doing in these shifting times is knowing that we are going through a shift. Now there are so many people in the Bible who have gone through shifts after an encounter with Jesus. The first person that I always think of when it comes to just being one way, encountering Jesus, and the leaving that encounter a completely different way is the Samaritan woman at the well. She literally met Jesus at this well. She had a divine appointment that she didn't even know about with Jesus at this well. And she came in as a woman with a reputation. She had been married five times. She was outcast in her society. And she left this encounter with Jesus and became the first documented evangelist in the Bible. She ran into her Samaritan city and told everyone that she wanted to tell them about a man who told her everything about herself and it's through her evangelism that so many Samaritans came to know Christ now we cannot talk about supernatural shifts that people have gone through in the Bible without talking about Paul who used to be called Saul Saul went from someone who was passionate okay he was on fire for killing Christians but after an encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus to literally go find some Christians to kill Jesus turned his entire life around Paul will go on to be one of the greatest men in the faith and he also would go on to author almost all of the New Testament. Galatians, Ephesians, Romans, Colossians, literally all of our favorite New Testament text comes from Paul who previously was Saul. So as you can see, there's something that is absolutely beautiful when we lean into what God is doing in these shifts. It's gonna be easy to fight it, but the beautiful thing that happens when we lean in and we say yes to God, we say yes to his plan for our life, and ultimately we're stepping into our calling. So in today's video, we're gonna be focusing on a specific text coming out of Acts, which documents this encounter that Paul, previously known as Saul, had with Jesus, again, on the road to Damascus. We're gonna be seeing what he experienced right after this encounter with Jesus. And we're gonna be pulling from here the signs that we too can look for in our lives when God is shifting us super naturally. The more aware we are of what to expect, the more we're able to lean in and get into position. Now, before we hop into it, I want to go ahead and pause here and thank the sponsor of today's video, Faithful Counseling. So you guys already know over here, we are huge proponents of Jesus Plus therapy. As we're going through the different shifts in our life, I know for myself, it has been so nice to have a licensed mental health professional who also shares my same faith values to process these shifts with. That is why I love Faithful Counseling because they make it so easy for you to get paired up with a licensed mental health professional who also shares your same Christian values. I'm gonna have a link down in the description box for you to check them out. I definitely encourage you guys, if you are on the fence, I always like to say this, let this be your sign, sis. They even even offer financial aid. So thank you again to Faithful Counseling for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now with all that being said, let's go ahead and hop into these three signs. Now first things first, the text that all of our signs today are going to be coming from is Acts chapter 9 verses 1 through 19. So I definitely encourage you guys to pause here and read through the text entirely just so you have the full context as we dive into specific verses. Now with all of that being said, let's go ahead and talk about sign number one 
The first sign that God is shifting you supernaturally is if you are being confronted with tough questions. Now, before we dive fully into this sign, I wanna just go ahead and start here with the text. The verse I'm gonna have you guys look at is Acts chapter nine, verse three. I'm gonna go ahead and pop it up on the screen so we can read it together. And it says, as he was approaching, he is Paul slash Saul, was approaching Damascus on his mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Now the person that is asking Paul slash Saul this question is Jesus. And as we are walking through our own supernatural shifts, we also are going to be confronted with tough questions like this. Paul was confronted with exactly what he was doing. Paul, Paul, why are you persecuting me? And for us, this might look like the Lord really convicting us and saying, hey, why are you hopping from relationship to relationship? What are you looking for that you're not going to me for? Or you might even have trusted friends around you saying, sis, why are you dating this person? Is this truly God's best for you? Or sis, why are you pursuing this job position? Is it the status that comes with it? Or is it truly what you feel like God has placed in your heart for you to do? It's when we come across these confronting questions that cause us to pause pause, take a little bit of inventory, do a little bit of a heart check, and it kind of gets us into that position to be open and willing to listen for the next thing that God has for us. Now these confronting questions definitely won't just happen one time. We're going to go through series of confronting questions like this because this is part of that sanctification and refining process. Now when God is doing that supernatural shift, we can absolutely be on the lookout for these, but just know throughout our walk with the Lord, this will definitely happen time and time again. This is a part of the process and honestly one of the benefits of walking with the Lord. He is always doing a good work in our heart. He is always trying to work things together for our good and he is always wanting to shift us and mold us to be more Christ-like. So this is going to be the very first sign that we can look out for when God is shifting us supernaturally. Now let's go ahead and hop into number two. So sign number two on our list today, the second sign that God is shifting you supernaturally is if you are experiencing isolation or separation from things that are familiar. Now, oftentimes when we're experiencing this isolation or separation, it is going to come with some uncomfortable feelings. We're gonna be feeling uneasy. We're gonna be feeling outside of our comfort zone because the things that were formerly familiar no longer are close to us or the things that we would go to to find comfort no longer are giving us the same comfort that they once did. Now, this is all a part of the process because we can't keep going back to the same places when God is trying to shift us. So when things just aren't hitting the same, we can't go to this one person or this one place to get comfort, that is God doing us a favor, putting us in position to really be redirected towards the path that he has for us and away from the things that are no longer in alignment with the person that he is calling us to be. Now for Paul, this happened drastically and this happened in a really big way. So let's go ahead and look at verses seven through nine. So Acts chapter nine, verses seven through nine. And we go ahead and pop them up on the screen and we can see what happened to Paul immediately after this encounter with Jesus where he was like, Paul, Paul, why are you persecuting me? And let's just pick up from there. So the verse is, the men with Saul stood speechless for they had heard the sound of someone's voice but saw no one. Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by the hand to Damascus. He remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. So this is huge, says Paul was literally made blind. The comfort of his sight was taken away from him. And the people that he was traveling with did not stay with him. The text didn't indicate that they stayed with him once they got to the city. So he was alone, isolated from the people that he was traveling with. He no longer had the comfort of his sight. And on top of that, he was fasting. He wasn't eating or drinking. So as you can see here, he was truly separated from all the creature comforts, truly separated from all familiarity. And this is where he drew closer to God. It's in moments like this that you really have to sit with yourself and think about all the things that you've done. And I'm sure Paul was going through his mind, thinking about all the actions that he's taken, all the people that he has hurt, and really feeling that godly sorrow. Godly sorrow changes our heart. Godly sorrow is what allows us to really be transformed from the inside out. And so this is the process that Paul was going through here in these verses. And this is also likely what we will experience when God is shifting us. We have 
have to wake up to some of the sin in our lives. We have to wake up to some of the things that we're doing that truly are in alignment with God's best for us and God's calling on our lives. And it's in these moments where we don't fight it because obviously it had to be uncomfortable. You can't see, you're not eating, all your friends are gone, you're not drinking anything. There's nothing comfortable about it. But the beauty that comes out on the other side, which we're gonna get to in this text, it is so incredibly worth it. So it's with this particular sign that you might start to notice that your relationships, your connections, the things that you're passionate about, they start to change. And that is all part of God's beautiful plan and his process. So that is going to be sign number two. So sign number three on our list today, the third and final sign that God is shifting you supernaturally is confirmation. God will send someone or something to confirm what he has revealed to you. Now I wanna go ahead and first dive into the verses here that show who was sent to Paul to confirm what the Lord was speaking to him on the road to Damascus. So we're gonna open up with Acts chapter nine verses 17 through 19 and we're gonna read those together so I'm gonna go ahead and pop them up on the screen so the text says so Ananias went and found Saul he laid his hands on him and said brother Saul the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit instantly something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he regained his sight then he got up and was baptized Afterward, he ate some food and regained his strength. So as we can see from the previous sign, God woke Saul slash Paul up to his own sin. He showed him all of the errors of his ways, but he didn't just leave him in that to sin. He brought someone into his life to confirm what the Lord had told him. Hey, do better, do something different with your life. I have something better for you to do with your life. And this is how you can walk it out. It says here in the text that after Ananias came to him that Paul was baptized. So we can go ahead and assume that Ananias baptized Paul. He likely was the first person that introduced introduced him to a community of believers. Now this, I also wanna note, Ananias was incredibly brave for walking up to Saul in the way that he did. Paul slash Saul had a reputation for being known as someone, again, who was killing Christians. So a Christian knowingly walking up to this man and telling him not only, hey, yes, God told me to come and tell you this, but calling him brother, Ananias' obedience was top tier. This was next level obedience. And this is the type of obedience, just a little side note, that we all should strive to have. Now, when it comes to this particular sign, Ananias was the vessel that God used to confirm to Paul what he had revealed to him on the road to Damascus. And so we also can expect to experience things like this, whether it's someone coming into our life to confirm what the Lord has done to us through a word, whether we come across a sermon that speaks directly to what God is doing in our heart in that shifting season, or it can be an Instagram post. It can be us reading in the Bible. Literally, God will meet you wherever you are. So whether you are at the mall, whether you find yourself oftentimes at work, God will meet you and get a message to you any way he chooses. And God can do anything. So it's really up to us to be expectant. Be on the lookout for the unconventional ways that the Lord is going to confirm what he is revealing to us during the shift. As the shift is happening, we are absolutely going to experience some type of confirmation. Now, one additional thing I want to note here when it comes to this supernatural shift, I didn't make this a sign because I feel like it's kind of all encompassing. It's just the fact that this shift for Paul happened fast. In the course of three days, his life trajectory was going one way and God literally did a 180. So oftentimes for us, when it comes to the shift that God wants to do in our lives, the shift to put us in position to be more of that person that he has created us to be, it's going to come with some type of divine acceleration. That is just how God works. So something by man's standard might take us, you know, two years to get into this type of position. When God is shifting us, it can take two days. God does not play by the same rules that we have to play here on earth. God can do anything. So often Oftentimes when it comes to these three signs, there's also going to be this underlying factor of just speed, of things happening in a sudden manner. And that's the beautiful part about God. Things can be restored like that. Things can be undone like that. You can get to a position that again, by the world standards would take you five years and three degrees to be in. 
and God can do it like that. And at the end of the day, it's through this divine type of acceleration, it's through things happening suddenly that God gets the glory. And that's what he wants all along, our hearts and for our lives to be used for his glory. All right, sis, that is going to be it for me. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And now, of course, it is your turn. So in the comments below, I would love to know, as you've gone through your own shifts, what is one thing that you've had to give up? Like I mentioned, a shift implies change. And when it comes to change, we likely are having to give up something to become more of this person that God has created us to be. So in the comments below, I would love to know what is one thing that you've had to give up as God has shifted you, whether it's in this particular season or in a previous season, and what is one thing that he has replaced as that thing was taken from you. I feel like sometimes as we're having to give up something, we can lose sight of the fact that if God ever takes something from us, he only intends to replace it with something better. So I feel like these comments are gonna be just full of a testimony of the goodness of God. So definitely take a second, drop your response down below. I will make sure to as well and take a scroll on through. As always, I love you guys and I will see you in my next video. Peace.